the only person that should run your life is God. End of story. Like, so if you're not being an active participant and protecting it, like, it's another conversation for another day, but I would much rather be on the offensive than to be revengeful. If you don't take personal responsibility and accountability for your occupation, more specifically your future and your purpose, then you will always be revengeful. There will always be a part of you that wants to fight fight to get back what you feel you have lost rather than to be proactive and to just lay the slate for what you have coming to unpack that what you will but the fourth area of wellness is your spiritual wellness nobody can grow your relationship with god except for you and even if you don't believe there's some aspect of spirituality that you have to have, even if you're an atheist. You have to believe in something, even if you don't believe in anything. Stick by that, but ask yourself the hard questions and have answers for them. Because everybody wants to know the meaning of life. And if you don't have a meaning for you that makes sense, you're just allowing anything to dictate where you end up. This is goes hand in hand with purpose and occupational wellness. I feel like spiritual wellness kind of guides your path while your occupational wellness structures your path. And if you have nothing guiding where you go, you will end up somewhere aimless. And it might be a good aimless. You might end up somewhere great and that's good for you. But did, were you really an active participant in it? Were you really putting anything towards it? When you die, do you feel fulfilled? I'm going to say probably not because you just let anything happen to you rather than you determining what it is you're 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 going to put in. And that doesn't mean that every day is going to be great because bad things happen to good people every single day and good things happen to bad people every single day. And for me personally, that's when your spirituality is activated and is kicked in because if I'm thrown off my path a little bit and it feels like this detour is inconvenient. Sometimes that detour is what's going to cultivate something inside of you to fulfill your purpose. But you won't know that if you're not grounded spiritually. So the <laughs> fifth area of wellness is your relational wellness. And looking at how you interact with the macro macrocosm. Are you allowing the macrocosm to dictate who you are? Or are you just participating in the macrocosm? and holding firm to your microcosm. And that is the same as saying, are you allowing the storm on the outside to dictate the storm inside? Or are you able to bring peace to yourself in the midst of chaos? And determine that for yourself and figure out what you will. But how you interact with other people, how you interact with the world around you, on a very basic scale, we think that if we're a good person, if we are unproblematic, makes us a good person and that's just not true as a christian jesus was probably the most problematic human to ever walk this earth to date people are still fighting over the things that he said people still misconstrue what he said people still find him extremely offensive and he's been dead and gone and rose again and is not here like in the present and still it's been like two thousand years and people still acting up so if being a good person is being unproblematic, then Jesus wasn't a good person. And by all historic accounts, he's one of the best individuals to ever live. Him, Gandhi, and so many other people. And the crazy thing is, Gandhi is really problematic too in and of himself, but we just gonna leave that for another day. So let's not equate being problematic because being a good person is fulfilling your purpose and it doesn't matter how many feathers you ruffle as you do it as long as you're doing it and uh in a way that aligns with what you believe in all your other areas of wellness and that sounds kind of wild but it's it's kind of true if all your areas of wellness are balanced, then you are contributing at the maximum capacity of what you can contribute to the world. So whether that be you being a force to be reckoned with or not. Uh, the sixth form of wellness is 
through financial wellness. When was the last time you took a look at your money? Are your finances reflective of what you believe in your other elements of wellness? So if you believe in, in knowledge and gaining knowledge for yourself, are you putting your money towards that? Or are you just hoping that whatever it is you want to learn, you'll just learn when you know what a man truly cares about based on where he puts his money? And while this earth was built to, to provide us with everything that we need without actually having a currency of money at the end of the day, the fact is, that we cannot do all things <laughs> in our own strength. So we have to have money to be able to sustain those said beliefs. The seventh form of wellness is your environmental wellness and how you participate with the environment. What are you giving to the earth? What do you believe about the earth and all of those things? Uh, what are you putting into the earth? So the earth produces for you, like I just said, everything that you need to live, are you giving back to the earth? Or are you just simply taking, 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 taking? And it doesn't matter what you believe about global warming or recycling and all those things. At the end of the day, what you put into the earth, you will ultimately reap back because it's producing everything for you. So take that what you will. And the last and final form of wellness number eight is your physical wellness and how you treat yourself and are you truly being an active participant in how you treat yourself physically this is the representation in my opinion of all the other eight dimensions of wellness you can physically see where my money goes when you look at me and my you look at my body um you can see how I feel about the environment when you look at my body. You can see how I feel about myself emotionally when you look at my body. You can see what I feel about myself mentally when you look at my body and how I carry myself and the things that I value and how I treat myself and treat my physicality. And that doesn't mean that you have to be skinny and eat vegan and all the things i i don't subscribe to that absolutist mindset at all but your body is the physical representation of your spirit and your mind not to say that what you do is for other people but your body is your first warning sign is your first indicator of the turmoil or uh, lack of balance in all those other dimensions of wellness. So if you are the center and you are centering yourself and you are the main character of your physicality, are you taking care of yourself? Are you keeping yourself clean? Are you keeping yourself hydrated? Are you giving your body what it needs in order to perform at its maximum capacity? Or are you running it into the ground? And again, this is not to say you have to eat vegan or all the things, but Elevate your heart rate every now and again just to keep it healthy and active. Eat well, drink water, and, you know, keep it clean. Wash. That It's really that simple. <laughs> but those are the first things that slip when any of those other dimensions of wellness are off. And try to do it to the fullness, you know what I'm saying? Like, now that I'm 25, I'm learning new ways to take care of my body that I never could have imagined, like, how Chinese facial care and all this. I'm so basic when it comes to that type of stuff. Clean it, keep it moisturized, and I'm good to go. And I'm starting to learn that, like, no, like, it takes a, a little bit more care as you get older. And, yes, you got to drink more water. And a little bit of roughage definitely helps with the colon and keeping the intestines nice and balanced and all the things. So, being an active participant and asking yourself those hard questions, um, what is it that would cause me to go, for example, a certain amount of time without washing my hair, right? I take pride in having my hair done, which is why you see her still wrapped up because she is still wet and I'm not taking her down until she is done curing. But what is it? that would hinder me from having that pride in the way that I look, in the way that I feel. 
and tracing that back to the other dimensions of wellness and finding the holes in the pockets of the other dimensions of wellness and ultimately like really funneling down to at the core of who I am, how is that reflecting with my relationship with God and my relationship with my, the purpose that he's given me and my purpose, the purpose that I am taking ownership of and having that ownership of who I am and how I am and all the things. And I think once we start all having this introspective, very self-minded uh, but not centered perspective of our lives, we begin to ask ourselves and be active participants in our story. And to address certain things that have been said, I think this will help negate women becoming pawn pieces in a man's world. I think this will help negate the self-centered mindset as well, because it will having checks and balances for how you treat the world around you as well as the people around you. And ultimately it all funnels down to your relationship with God and are you an active participant in that? Because how you treat God and the health of your relationship with God will ultimately determine the health of your relationship with all other eight dimensions of wellness. So I hope this wasn't too much. <laughs> I hope that it made some sense and I hope that these nuggets actually help you guys. Um, and hopefully it just at a minimum just sparks a conversation inside of you to really start questioning the things that matter and you matter. So I hope that it starts to spark something in you. So um, if you've made it this far, thank you so much. Uh, thank you guys so much for your continued support of the channel and all that we do here on this platform. Um, we will have more videos coming as always. I would like for you all to like, subscribe, and share if you can. Um, please check out the blog post in the description box below for even more details on a lot of the things I said. There's a whole lot of scriptures and things like that attached to the blog post that I didn't necessarily mention here, but backs up everything that I've said. And if you guys have any questions, leave them in the description box below. And until the next video, thanks. Bye.